Welcome to the Ideal Investor Show. Join us on the journey to financial success. Let's go. Oh, and welcome back to another episode of the Ideal Investor Show. And uh, today I want to first bring you something that really kind of stayed with me. You know, I don't know if you have this happening to you every once in a while where you basically see something or read something from someone and you read it and you understand it, but then you ask yourself, okay, what does it really mean? And it kind of takes a little bit of reflection. One of my subscribers and, you know, like connections on Substack, her name is Dr. Louise Shriver. She basically wrote an essay titled Friendship as a Business Foundation. And I thought that was kind of like an intriguing idea Now, obviously, we know a lot of stories where people have started a business and they structured it right from the beginning as a partnership. And I don't mean like a partnership like a married couple or something like that, but several people coming together to create a new business or a new company. And they are not related, but they are working on the same idea or had the same idea or have certain skills that complement each other. And therefore, they built uh, and create the business based on that. And they are basically co-founders and co-owners. But what Louise is basically describing is, can you build a business where you, with your own team, as well as you for your clients, have a relationship that's more like a friendship rather than what's con traditionally considered to be a business relationship? And... She looked at that because there's obviously always the question, if I am very friendly to my employees, if I'm very friendly to my customers, are they going to start taking advantage of me or the business for that matter? That can in some way lead to the decision, well, if I want to avoid that, then I need to put all kinds of processes and stuff like that into place. And it really never becomes anything that is even close to a friendship. Now, one of the questions or approaches for the thought experiment that Louise looked at was to say, okay, what happens if somebody is in need of a suggestion or an inspiration or a solution? And one of the very, very traditional approaches to that that have existed for centuries is that you go to something that in the past was called an oracle. And you may have heard the story of the Oracle of Delphi. So there were people that, whether it's true or not, were claiming that they can see things either in the future or see things that other people can't see. And that was basically the idea of the oracle. But then there's the other thing that originated a little bit more on a religious end. And that is you go to a shaman or you go to a healer or you go to a monk or you go to your pastor so those representatives of the church or of a religion have oftentimes been the ones that people went to when they had questions, when they needed a solution or when they needed to discuss their problems. So what Louise came up with, which intrigued me, was to say, is there such a thing like a working monk? And the idea here is to say, okay, there are basically two kinds of monks or monasteries. The one is where people go to become a monk and to pray and to think and to reflect. And there are even some where you're not even speaking, where you basically live your life in silence. And sometimes these monasteries actually offer retreats or opportunities for people to come there and join them in silence for a week, which from a few people that have tried that, I have learned that it's much harder than you think. It would probably be really hard for me, like a blabbermouth as, as I am. But the differentiation between that kind of going to a monastery, either being a monk or basically joining them for a limited amount of time, is to experience a lifestyle. And Louise's idea is to say, well, if you take the role that typically applied to a monk, to a pastor, to an oracle, and turn that into work... So that people come to you because you are working with them and for them to find solutions. Would that be a different, a new, a maybe unique way of a foundation for a business? And I think it could be. The tricky part, 
And I wrote a response to Louise's essay for that. The tricky part obviously would be, how do we make sure just the same question that the working man, monk is not always only giving, but that the people that come for advice are actually applying any kind of the suggestions and really make a change in their life. And that is where the bridge comes to why I'm actually talking about this on our show here today. Because what we're really doing, and I don't want to go as far as saying we are or I am a working monk or anything like that, but what we're really trying to do is change your mindset so that you realize that you are in charge of your own destiny and your own future by setting up the right systems. And we're basically helping for you to get access to all the tools that you will need to ultimately be successful. And then what it will take is for you to be willing to take action to put those tools and those relationships and those connections into action and into reality and into the approach that you have for you and the goals that you have set for yourself and then maintain the relationship so that whenever there is an obstacle coming up or something that you haven't seen, you come back and say, hey, this is now happening to me. Can we talk about it? Can we look at it? Can we find a solution that is reasonable and keeps me on track to my goal? And in that sense, I wouldn't mind to be either considered or join the community of working monks. But I thought if you ever wanted to see how the thought experiment came out, go on Substack and look at Dr. Louise Schreiber and read the essay because I really think it's an interesting idea. It's not really true friendship because I don't know that I would say a monk, a pastor, a shaman or something like that would really be considered friend in the traditional meaning of the word but friend in the sense of common thoughts, common empathy for what's going on. That kind of friendship, I think, is there. And that's why this idea, that's why this idea of a working monk as a working term, as a thought experiment to say, hmm, am I fulfilling that role? Am I very judgmental or not so much? That is really, I think, an interesting approach. And I would be very interested to find out what you think about it. If you would say coaching or mentoring and training and working with somebody who is helping you achieve your goals is in that sense a little bit like working with like a friend. So leave a comment. If you like this episode, please download it, rate the show. And if you like to talk about it or anything else that falls into the category of you developing your path to financial independence, then please book a call. When you go to idealinvestorshow.com and find the button and then book a call and we can have a conversation. So that's it for today. Be well and stay safe and I talk to you tomorrow.